Hello, Peaceful Inner Warriors United! Today I wanted to create an important video about what is your life full of. In life we have the choice of either filling our life with faith or with fear. And there is an important acronym that we can also use here, which is find your tribe, understand what's important to you, love what arises, and let go of your attachment to the not now, which is the full formula that Peaceful Inner Warriors United understand and use. So, what does it mean to find your tribe? It's not about staying with the family that you were born to, because ultimately we came through a certain group, but we don't belong to that group or those individuals. Ultimately, the hero's journey is about stepping away from the very tribe that we were born to so that we can go and find ourselves and then come back as individuals to share who we found ourselves to be by being away from who we grew up with, by moving away from who we thought that we needed to look up to because they were the best in the pond that we grew up in. And the truth is that our tribe that we were born to, our family, is not the same as the soul family that we are here to find. And so it's very challenging for those of us on a spiritual path who have difficult relationships with family members to not judge ourselves because it's not ideal or we just can't seem to find common ground, or people are just not okay with our too muchness. And that's been my own journey, and that's part of why it's so important to me to have the community of Peaceful Inner Warriors united. The second piece of that, very connected and yet separate, is understanding what's important to you. There is a lot of expectation when we are part of a group that we belong to the group and we conform to the group and we do what the group would like. But being an individual means actually understanding what's important to us authentically, not who we thought we needed to be in order to buy belonging, who it is inside of us that makes us say, oh, that is so exciting. That's the part of us that if we are willing to nurture, that's when we're truly honoring who and whose we truly are. Love what arises is the next piece of this, and it's because so oftentimes we get triggered in the present moment and then so much more shows up for us emotionally than what that circumstance justified or warranted. And it's because we have to understand that the trigger was only to let us know about the trapped emotion that we hadn't dealt with before. And so when we get triggered, all of that comes rushing to the surface because it's all ready to go if we're willing to let it. And so loving what arises means to understand that our emotional landscape is similar to an ocean. And if we think of buried emotions as toxic barrels that we essentially threw overboard and let crash down to the ocean's floor without thinking that we'd ever have to deal with them again, we forget about the fact that there will always be significant emotional events that trigger us and stir the pot of our own emotions that raise those barrels from the bottom to be able to either emerge unpierced or more likely to emerge having been leaking for years and even maybe bashed open and suddenly we have a huge mess and a disaster to deal with. But it's only because it's ready to be dealt with and ready to be released, if we're willing to do the inner work. Which requires us to let go of our attachment to the not now. It's about forgiving ourselves in those moments when we do have an outburst because of all of the emotion coming to the surface and the amount of chaos that we feel on the inside and all of the anger and the projections and the blaming that we want to put onto someone else so that we don't have to feel like we were the ones that did that. Well, the truth is, we were the ones that didn't know how to deal with the emotions because we weren't taught how to. 
generally speaking. And so instead of trying to blame anyone else or even ourselves, it's just about letting go of our attachment to the not now moments and breathing ourselves back fully present into the moment that we are currently in. And that is how we fill ourselves with faith instead of fear. And the beautiful thing about choosing to fill ourselves with faith instead of fear is that faith and love and peace and the higher level emotions that are more states of being than emotions at all, they are going to make it so fear is no longer welcome and fear will leave because love and fear cannot coexist in the same space at the same time. So in case you are feeling worried or stressed or angry or resentful, especially because holidays oftentimes bring together the very tribe of individuals that we came through because they and we are teachers for one another. And so when we bring those personalities all together and the conflicts that arise or just the dread of having to be around those people whom you've struggled to get along with previously maybe, all of that's going to come to the surface just because it's all there to serve you. It's all there to help you release yourself from all of those not now moments of the past so that in future moments you don't have so much baggage emotionally to have to deal with when a significant emotional event arises again to activate what, if we deal with now, will no longer be there. So I hope this message helps you in deciding more consciously what you will be full of, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Laura J. Namaste. Namago.